welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen, and today is part three of my homemade gift giving series that I'm doing using this fragrance from Be Scented. It's called Bourbon Butterscotch. And this smells so beautiful. It's rich, it's luscious, it's kind of foody, but more mature than that. It's not super foody. I think it's perfect for men and women. I love it. So today, the project is we're gonna make a cream pot lotion and bath bombs with this fragrance. And these will accompany the soaps we've already made and the candles and the wax melts that we've already made with this fragrance. So if you followed along with me, you'll be able to put it all together for a beautiful, scrumptious and indulgent gift package for somebody or keep it for yourself. <laughs> okay, let's talk about the bath bomb molds that I'm using today. I can't remember where I got these. I think I got these from Be Scented, but Kata Molds also has wonderful 3D printed bath bomb molds. So um, I will try to remember and find the link for where I got these bath bomb molds. These make pucks, just a beautiful round puck with a little flat edge on them. They're wonderful and dense, and I just love these in the bath. They're easy to press. I'll be using a um, hand press and I'll show you how to hand, literally hand press these. Um, so there's the big mold and then any leftover that I have, I have these teeny little ones that are just like that. These are what I use for my shower steamers. Um, so if you have any leftover powder for bath bombs, you can make a little bit, a little mini one. Um, I love those and I will try to find, I've got to go back and look and see where I got these. It was either Bee Scented or Kata Molds, one of those, and I'll find it for you. And then for the cream pot lotion, I have these little four ounce jars. I got these on Amazon and they're just super cute. And my labels fit on these. I'll talk about lotion labels when we get there. It's got a nice little foam insert in there so they seal up really nice. And this will be an emulsified cream pot lotion. So it's good to ship in summer and winter. It's wonderful, luxurious, and it's gonna smell so good with this fragrance. And I will have the recipe for both of these, the bath bombs and the cream pot lotion down in the description box below. So lotion and bath bombs, that's what we're doing today. Let me get everything pulled together. I need to sanitize my work surface. Anytime you're doing a lotion or a bath bomb, really any bath and body product, but specifically lotions and things like that, uh, sanitation of your work surface, all your tools and all your vessels is really a, a must. So I gotta get busy and do that and we will come back and make some lotion and bath bombs today. All right, we are back and it's time to make some bath bombs. I'm gonna move a little bit quickly through this process and I will leave a detailed bath bomb video link down below if you wanted to watch a slower, a slower version of this. But let's move along. The first thing I need to do is sift all of my dry ingredients so they're nice and fine and powdery. It makes for a smooth bath bomb mixture. Um, so what I have here is baking soda. I have 680 grams of baking soda. I'm gonna run it through my sifter. After that, here are my other powder ingredients. I have 28 grams of cream of tartar, 28 grams of SLSA, and 28 grams of kale and clay in here. I'll get those all mixed together. This is my citric acid. I have I have 425 grams of citric acid that I'm gonna hold off to the side until after we mix in our wet ingredients, and I'll talk about them when we get there. But right now, let's sift our dry ingredients together here and get our mixture ready to go. This is all perfectly sifted, very smooth, and now it's time for the liquid portion. So I'm scenting at 3% fragrance oil. I also have 14 grams of witch hazel, 14 grams of polysorbate 80, and 14 grams of grapeseed oil. And the poly 80 keeps the oil from making the bottom of your tub slick. So if you're putting oil in a bath bomb, you need the poly 80. If you don't put oil in your bath bomb and you have another recipe, you don't need the polysorbate 80. So before we mix this in, I'm gonna put a little mica colorant in here. And I'm gonna go very light because after we've pressed these and they've had a few days, to dry we're going to come in and do a cocoa butter drizzle on top to make them look extra wonderful okay so for these bath bombs being a bourbon butterscotch scent i'm going to use caramel brown butterscotch mica from wholesale supplies plus and uh, this is beautiful it's got a, a good amount of shimmer it's so pretty 
So I will work this in with my hands and get it nice and worked in before we add the wet ingredients and then we're really gonna work this to get a good um, mix. And I'm leaving my mica off to the side in case I wanna add some more later, but I think this will be good. All right, that's looking pretty evenly distributed. It looks very light right now, but when we add the liquid portion, it'll darken up. So um, let's add all of those in at one time, and I'm just gonna work this around. It's kind of like kneading dough. You just wanna work it and work it until you're 100% sure it's fully incorporated, and then we'll go ahead and add our citric acid last. All right, this is very well and incorporated. There's no wet spots or dry spots. And uh, I'm gonna do most of my working after we get the citric acid added in here. And we're really gonna work on this to get it nice, fully combined, kneaded in, and then we'll get to pressing our bombs. I got 10 full-size 4.2 ounce pucks and one skinny one that will just be an extra for a family or friend or myself but uh, 10 big pucks these need to sit for a couple of days I'm gonna let these sit overnight I have a dehydrator over by my curing rack so it'll be in that region I like to keep my studio dry um, I'll let them sit overnight tomorrow I'll flip them and let them sit another day and then we'll come back and decorate these and do some drizzle Okay, it's the next day and it's time to make a cocoa butter drizzle for our bath bombs. And so what I have here is two ounces of cocoa butter. I'm gonna melt this down. Then I'm gonna add two ounces of baking soda and stir it really well, you'll see. And if it's a little bit runny, um, if you get the cocoa butter really hot, it's very fluid, let it cool off a little bit till it thins out to a nice, you know, thick, drippy frosting consistency. But um, you can always add a little more baking soda if um, it's too thin. And then we'll add a little polysorbate 80 and some mica. I'll talk you through when we get there. First, I need to melt my cocoa butter. All right, the cocoa butter is all melted. And to this, I am going to add 0.5 ounces or half an ounce of polysorbate 80. That is our emulsifier that's going to help this cocoa butter emulsify in the bath water and not make a little oil slick on top. I'm also going to add a touch of fragrance, probably about 0.2 ounces, just a splash because I want the frosting to smell real pretty. Alrighty, and now I'm going to add two ounces of baking soda and get this stirred up and see how I like the consistency. And this is very warm, so I'll let it cool also before I judge. And this is just store-bought baking soda. All right, now we want to stir this really well and make sure you don't have any baking soda lumps. You want this completely smooth. And then I will add uh, my mica. I don't want to add the mica until I get all the lumps out because uh, I feel like the color of the mica could hide the lumps. So I'm just making sure this is real smooth. We're going to go ahead and add, uh, so this is the same mica we did in the bath bombs, but I went very light on the bath bombs. I'm going to go a little heavier in the frosting so it'll stand out. This um, caramel brown butterscotch, so beautiful. I mean, look at that. So let's add this in here. And this is one of those sort of play it by ear. Let's stir that in and see how we like it. 
One of the things about bath bombs with fragrance levels and mica colors is you have to remember this is going in a tub full of water. So uh, it's more concentrated in the bomb, but once it disperses in your bath water, it's very, you know, dispersed out and light. So that's something to consider. Oh, I love that color. Okay, we're gonna keep it right there. But see how runny that is? If I put this on my bath bombs, it would just run right off. Um, I'm gonna let this cool off just a bit and I might add a touch more baking soda in here, bring it up to three ounces of baking soda to two ounces of cocoa butter. I think that's what I'm gonna do. And we'll come back when it's time to drizzle. All right, it's time to drizzle. I did a little test here and it didn't just completely run off. So it's still very fluid, but as this cools down, because cocoa butter is so hard, it will harden up very nicely and these wrap really well. So let's get to drizzling. It is time to make our cream pot lotion with our bourbon butterscotch fragrance. And uh, so the first thing I need to do is get my liquid phase measured out here. I've got my little double boiler going. I'm gonna set it on there to simmer and then we'll get to our oil phase and get that melted down here. So for the water phase today, we are gonna do a 50-50 split of distilled water and aloe vera juice, not gel. Make sure you know the difference. This is liquidy like water but it makes fabulous lotion. I just love it in there. So I need eight ounces or 224.5 grams of uh, liquid, and I'm gonna split that in half. 112 grams of water and 112-ish grams of the aloe to get to our full amount. I like a 50-50 split. You could do 100% aloe, 100% water, it's up to you. You could even infuse your water with oats and make like a oat milk. Um, I will leave a link for a more detailed lotion recipe down below, but uh, I'm gonna go kind of fast through this again because we're doing two different crafts today in this video and I don't want it to be forever long. So let's get to measuring our liquid portion. get on to our oil phase and this is a very buttery formula it's nice and thick I do a triple butter blend and you could do any butter you want babassu kokum uh, today I'm doing mango shea and cocoa butter um, and I buy it in bulk but uh, I need 13.6 grams of mango butter all right and my next butter is shea butter or shea butter and I need 20 0.4 grams of shea butter. All right, and last but not least, I need 20.4 grams of cocoa butter. need 13.6 grams of a liquid oil of your choice. Today I am using hemp seed oil. I just think it's luscious and I really like it in my lotions. It's fabulous for your skin, but you could use any liquid oil of your choice. Olive oil, jojoba oil, and just you fill in the blank. But 13.6 of liquid oil. Now I need 27.2 grams of emulsifying wax. Um, and there are several different emulsifying waxes to choose from. There's a soft and silky and, you know, play around and find the one you like. This is just a basic emulsifying wax. It's not fancy, but it gets the job done. And I think it's fabulous in lotion. I got this emulsifying wax from Soper's Choice. Okay, last but not least in our oil phase, I need 20.4 grams of steric acid. I'm gonna put my little pot of the oil phase up here next to the water and let it melt completely. And now uh, we will come back when it's all melted and ready to go. All right, we're back. 
and the oils are all melted. Our water is steaming and I did pull it off and weigh it and brought the weight back up to where I need it to be, which just add a little bit of water um, because there's some evaporation and I forgot to put a lid on it. But here we have the melted oils. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe off the bottom of the container so I don't drip hot water. There's three more ingredients going in our lotion, but those will be added during the cool down phase. We're gonna add our fragrance. We're gonna add the preservative. Today I'm using Liquid Germol Plus. It's called a different name here from Wholesale Supplies Plus, but this is what this is. And I'm gonna add a little touch of vitamin E oil. Um, and this is an antioxidant, not a preservative. So you still need your preservative with your vitamin E, but they work great in tandem. So let's get this off and this is my favorite part of lotion making. Push this out of the way, it's hot and we don't wanna get involved with that. There we go. My favorite part is adding the oil phase to the water phase and it gets all milky and the magic happens. I just love that. So we're adding our hot oil phase to our hot liquid phase. And there it is. Mm. I use natural cocoa butter, so it does have a natural cocoa butter scent, and I'm smelling it right now, and it smells divine. I like that, but if you don't like um, the shea butter scent or the cocoa butter scent or any of that, get the uh, ultra-refined or refined butters, and then it will have no um, odor cast on your lotion. But personally, I like the cocoa butter. All right, I'm gonna give this a quick buzz with my stick blender here. I wanna burp out any air bubbles just to get it all emulsified, and then we are going to let it cool. I'm just gonna walk away till this starts to cool down and we will get back to our next ingredients. All right, it is time for our cool down phase and look how beautiful and thick this is getting. It's actually a little thicker than I'd like right now. Um, it's a delicate balance between when it's runny but too warm and thick and um, anyway, all that being said, let me get it on the scale, tear it out. I'll tell you what the temperature we're at and talk about why this is important. All right, we are at 96.9 degrees Fahrenheit and today's preservative is Liquid Germol Plus and this needs to be added under 122 degrees Fahrenheit. So um, it is heat sensitive. It's a wonderful preservative, but it is heat, heat sensitive. So with that being said, I need to add 1.7 grams of liquid germol plus if you're going to use a different preservative look up the usage rate for lotions for your preservative but i'm going to use my pipette, pipette because that's a tiny little amount all right the next ingredient i'm going to add is vitamin e oil uh, and this is a percentage of the total which is why i did not include this in the um, total oil volume, because it's an extra antioxidant. So uh, this is extra, and I'm going to add 1.7 grams of vitamin E oil. All right, and last but not least, I have my fragrance oil. And let's talk about fragrance oil, IFRA values, uh, which is the percentage you can use in different products. Soap is a category, lotion is a category, candles, wax melts, they all have their own category. So for lotion, um, and it's a level five category, there are several different levels within level five. You have face cream, you have body cream, hand lotion, and baby products, and they are very different and for each fragrance too. So you can't just go off what I'm using today for this uh, fragrance. It depends on what kind of cream you're making. If this was for a little baby, it's like 0.2 or 0.1. It's very, very low, like less than 1%. Um, for body cream, this was 5% usage rate for face cream it was i think like 1.3 i looked it up a while ago but uh came up with my own uh, today i'm going to do um 
2% because it was in between. <laughs> it was towards the face and delicate. So I'm going to do 2% and I'm not going to do 5%. 5% would be very strong also. And I do like to wear perfume sometimes. Um, so I don't want overly scented products. I just like the essence of the scent while I'm using it. Um, so 2% is what I'm doing today for this fragrance. And I'm going to do 6.8 grams of this fragrance. But please know if you're going to use essential oils or a different fragrance, you must look up the values for it because they are not all the same. All right, 6.8 for me. And now I need to get these all stirred in here and let this finish cooling. And I'm going to be piping it into the jars today. And then after I get it piped into my jars, I'm gonna let it sit and finish cooling, and then we will come back and do labeling of our bath bombs and our lotion. Boy, this smells good, and it is thick and luscious. Look at that. I mean, this is a cream pot. It's that thick. Love it. back to wrap our products. I'm going to put the lid on my cute little lotion pot and this is so thick and luscious. This is not good for a pump. This is a jar of lotion recipe so just keep that in mind and I'm going to get my label on it here. Um, I'm using labels from online labels. These are two inch labels that I'm using for the bath bomb and these are one and a half by five inch labels that I get from onlinelabels.com and I use their Maestro label designer to design these. Um, and the font that I have the name here, I purchased that font on Etsy. I get asked a lot about these labels and the font. So just that middle font there I purchased on Etsy. Everything else is from Maestro. I just thought it was really pretty. And so these one and a half by five inch labels fit on so many different of my jars. I love them and they're perfect. So here is the lotions all jarred up. Sorry, they're rolling away. And now I have my little bath bombs here. And so what I'm gonna do is shrink wrap the bath bombs. Look how adorable these came out. They smell so good. <laughs> so what I have is, let me get those out of the way. This is just what I have on hand. These could do a four by six or a four by four um, shrink bag. I have six by six inch, so I'm just gonna seal off the excess and label it up. So let's get a bath bomb in here. And I put it in the corner. Okay, so it's in one corner. So I'm gonna take off the excess on the side and now I have an open pouch. This is about a four by six. So that would be a good size to get just for this bath bomb mold. So I've got it sealed up here. Now I'm gonna use my heat gun and the only caution is the heat gun of course is hot and this is a cocoa butter drizzle on there. You don't want it to melt. So I usually start on the back side here to seal up a lot of the excess and I just touch the top enough to shrink it down. So that's what I'm gonna do because I don't wanna melt off this pretty drizzle. It's all shrinked up. The thing I like about shrink wrap is it really protects these bath bombs and shipping. They are very stable in here. Now I'm going to get my label. This is a two inch label from onlinelabels.com and this entire label was designed on their Maestro label designer. And there we go. Perfection. Well, I really hope you enjoyed today's video and I hope you give these recipes a try just for self-care or to give for gifts. I just think they're fabulous. And uh, let me know if you've tried the recipes, how you like them. 
and I hope you have a wonderful day.